Hi you guys. Got another video for you. There's a lot of craziness still going on in the media. It's gonna be a little background noise here because humanity is still trying to flourish and that's good. People are moving in, moving out, kids are playing. Things can be still good. Um, I made some notes because I thought it was important. I needed to stay calm, even though I've had my espresso. And I just wanna point some things out um, by starting with a post that I had made recently on Facebook. And this is my other crappy phone with the crack in it, but it looks like this. And um, it has been shared a lot and it's not my own. I, I got it um, from someone as well, but it says, I say we close down the national media for 30 days and watch 80% of the world's problems go away. A lot of people liked it, but then there was this guy, and since it was a public post, I don't know who this guy is, but um, he says this, how stupid can you MFs be? The media only reports the news. What we need to stop listening to is that lying, ignorant ass president. And the first thing I thought was, whoa, divide and conquer. Man, he fell for it. Um, there's no reason to attack anyone who uh, supports Trump or doesn't. Like it's, we're talking about the media, right? It's very easy to go, it's that guy. It's very easy, but they have other people behind them with bigger agendas that are not always in line with the Constitution. I'm just saying. We've seen it over and over and over. And I used to be all down the, down the way Democrat, just vote straight Democrat, boom. And then one day I was talking to a couple of my Republican friends and, you know, trying to have a, a logical, emotionally balanced conversation about our opposing views. And uh, they said, well, hang on, you don't like government all up in your business. And, um, you know, you believe that you should be able to make independent decisions and keep your hard earned money and on and on. And you believe in these rights and those like, and, and I'm not talking about other rights that are uh, taboo because that's all individual case basis. So it kind of went back and forth and they said, so basically, and I'm like, stop, no, that was my phone. I said, no. No, uh, eventually I realized I am neither Democrat or Republican. I once thought I was libertarian, but really I just decided to just get rid of all the clutter and say, I, I can't stand the divide and conquer. I am a spirit having a human experience, which is another post I made. And a lot of people jumped on that one and said, yes. I said, raise your hand, and a lot of people said yes, and I'm glad to know those people. So anyway, going back to the post. Sting was right, though. We are spirits in the material world, and there is no political solution. Okay. So um, going back to the post, you know, I didn't know who the guy was, and so I did a little research on him, and I found, uh, I found some information just a little bit you know and i said okay cool this is who i'm dealing with and i said so hi i see you are a proud blessed family man let me start by saying that anger won't lead to the kind of example the younger generation will benefit from although i too have been known to rant um but that said critical thinking is essential and i do understand your feelings about the president um his ego is definitely his downfall let's just start with that he can be very, very offensive, no doubt. Ultimately, the only thing we keep witnessing about choosing sides, however, is divide and conquer, and it is working like a charm. I'm sure if you were in a room with anyone who likes this post, uh, you would find that many, if not all of them, are genuinely good-hearted and highly intelligent human beings. And it's true, because I know a lot of them. But let's ask the more important question here. This post was about the media controlling things. So in all caps, I ask, who owns the media? That is a question we should be very interested in having answered. 
Well, there are answers. And so I cite some articles and there's some uh, really cool, um, there's a cool graphic out there that kind of shows the way it's designed, which, oh, by the way, is like a pyramid. Um, there's always someone way up there benefiting more than the people way down there. So there's that. But then that brought me to my second, um, or my next post, or my next uh, comment that I posted within that post, which was about the bill that was passed in 2012, known as the smith munt Modernization Act. And so I will link that in the description box. Essentially, if you can get through the tricky jargon, the media can be manipulated. And there's another thing called the mockingbird effect, I believe. And all the um, journalists have the same script. It's kind of creepy, kind of very Orwellian, kind of spot on Orwellian. So there's that. Um, my next thing that I wanted to mention is I found a video by Dr. Leonard Horowitz, who is much older now, but in this video, he's giving a talk to a room full of experts and some uh, lay people um, about some things in the medical industry that were very disconcerting to him. In this particular video, when he was much younger, I want to say this is 20 or more years ago, um, 20, 20 years ago, I don't know. And it's the, or, the origin of HIV. Okay, this is a fascinating video. So be of an open mind and watch the whole thing because he cites references and I will link that as well. Um, and so my next point, Bill Gates. Why the hell are we seeing him all of a sudden all over the news? When when did the founder of a software company become an expert in anything medical? Follow the money, follow the money about World, World Health Organization, how Bill Gates is associated, um, how a previous vaccine crippled many children, how he's very invested and interested in getting this new vaccine out to save the people how many of us already know it's, it's gonna take a long time before you can actually prove that something works. Um, but then again, they're using a $20 solution that's curing people. Doctors are talking about it, the chloroquine with the zinc. I mean, don't give it to just anyone, but the doctors know what they're doing. Let them do it, but it's only $20. Who benefits from that? Oh, the human life that's in the bed moving forward. Donald Trump has stock. Oh, yeah, right. I, I looked that up as well, and that's another slanted, um, a, a slanted story. It's not even that much money. You know, he's a businessman, great, whatever. Highly offensive. He, his presentation sucks. It really does. But I, I'm just, I'm, I'm having an issue believing everything we're hearing in the media. Smith-Munt Act of 2012. There's that. So, moving forward, the government constantly presents us with problem, reaction, solution, formula, over and over and over again. Remember 9-11? Boom! Towers go down. Oh my God, it's the terrorists. Go kill the terrorists! And how many lives were lost of our own? And then, oh... Were there any weapons of mass destruction? Were, were all these people actually here? What's happening? What's happening? Oh my God, my son is dead. My daughter is dead or disabled for life. The fire marshal, the, the chief fire marshal in New York at Ground Zero actually interviewed with an unbiased news source and said there were explosions in the basement of the building. What happened to building number seven, by the way? Nothing like that. What? Zeitgeist is another good one. I'll link it. So, problem. Let's do our own problem reaction solution formula, shall we? Problem. We're being lied to. We're being lied to at every turn. 
we're being manipulated. What should our reaction be? Demand the truth. Go seek out unbiased news sources. They're out there. I'll dig, I'll find a few, and I'll link them below. Solution, who do you believe? Yourself, your inner guidance, your soul. Speaking of Dr. Leonard Horowitz from uh, the thing I had mentioned earlier about the origin of HIV, he all of a sudden did a 180 and started becoming the, the front person uh, in, in the foreground of healing DNA through 528 hertz um, healing tones, otherwise known as the miracle tone, the love tone. The earth itself vibrates at a specific level and our human bodies, um, we react and respond positively and negatively to certain hertz levels. The 528 hertz tone is amazing. And you guys, I used to listen, I used to smoke lots of weed when I was a teenager, before I had kids. Smoke weed, couldn't handle it very well because my DMT was like, boo, dinosaurs and shit were in the room. And I was like, oh, I gotta eat a cheeseburger and get out of this. I don't like it. So I couldn't handle it. But I listened to, you know, old Metallica and Slayer and Megadeth. And, you know, then it went into like 80s underground stuff. And I, you know, like I, I used to listen to the heavy stuff, really cool heavy beats. And, uh, I've been all over the, the musical spectrum and I still enjoy a little like hard beat kind of stuff, you know, but the 528 hertz, when I really want to sit still and be mindful and do my deep breathing and find some inner guidance, that's my go-to, preferably with some, you know, ocean sounds or nature sounds in the background. That's my go-to. I can literally feel it and it will heal the DNA. Just try it. You have your own vessel carrying your soul around the earth, listening to all of this bullshit that you're being bombarded with. Fear, fear, fear. But your soul is like, no. No. Listen to me. Your soul doesn't lie. That's all I'm saying. So it's pretty cool what Leonard Horowitz did with that one. Um, the next thing that I want to cite is Hollywood. Now, again, I've met some really cool people in Hollywood, I, I in the industry, and um, they're not all bad, okay? Like, you know, that guy says, or whatever. Anyway, true lies, interesting. So, preemptive programming, that's a thing. How many times have you seen a movie and then you go, oh my God, what if, what if? And then one day out in our real world, you see it and you go, oh my God, that thing is happening. Remember that movie? That's creepy, wow, how, that's really weird. That thing is actually happening. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's preemptive programming. It's planting the seed to get you familiarized with it so when they put it out there, it already feels like, well, been there, done that. So maybe like in the movie, I guess we could do this, we could do that. Have, have you all noticed the field day that Netflix is having with all of these fear-based virus movies? I literally canceled my subscription to Netflix once I saw that. And I'm all gaia would out, <laughs> Gaia TV, just saying. Some people may disagree with that too, but it, whatever, I like it. Um, Rewired by Dr. Joe Dispenza. That's a great program. Watch that, Rewired. He explains the science behind rewiring the brain through practices like mindfulness and meditation. It's fascinating. So yeah, preemptive programming. That's been done forever and a day. Um, it's like they're predicting the future. Someone told me the other day about a couple of Simpson episodes they saw, and I looked them up and I said, oh my God. So one was about Trump sliding down a, a slide, and then there's something about a virus. And this was a few years ago, and, and I don't know if it was when he was in office or not, I'll have to look. But the other one I saw 
granted the um, title of the video is shocking and it should be but it's about spirit cooking and there is such a thing and it's deplorable um, and it's about the way that these horrible beings walking the earth actually treat children remember Ashton Kutcher in front of Congress unfortunately he's talking to some of the very villains that are behind human trafficking just saying or pedophilia we'll just start with that one don't get me started I'm throw up in my soul so one of the movies that I saw that made me go oh my god we're being mocked was the Kingsman Secret Service and I will link that particular scene I was having dinner a glass of wine and I stood up during the church fight scene because Samuel L. Jackson, the bad guy, um, all the common people have these government issued phones and he suddenly says, flip the switch. And the SIM cards go and the people start losing their ever loving minds. And there's blood and people are getting killed and fighting. And interestingly, brilliantly, ironically, twistedly, they are playing Free Bird by Leonard Skinner. Touche. Um, but that's when I stood up and said, they're mocking us. Wally, Wally, let's all just sit here and let's be told what to do and not be independent thinkers and ask the questions and we'll wait for Jeff Bezos to save the day with his tiny little penis slave driving all of his workers. Even before this whole thing came out, I heard from several people who work for Amazon. They're like, if you have to pull over and go to the bathroom, you better like make it snappy. God help you if you have diarrhea that day. Get docked. So Bezos. Micropenis. Bird box, that's another one. Bird box. Don't look, it's terrifying. Don't look, and if you do, wake up, you're blind. Only the blind are at peace. Hmm, brilliant, not funny. Hmm, oh my God. So there's that. Another thing that I wanted to um, point out was my loved one that I mentioned in another video. Uh, has COPD, probably have a little glass, mark, reading glasses marks on my nose. She has COPD and um, so she went into the hospital in December of 2019 and she said, Melody, I know what it feels like to have a, a breathing attack with this and this is different. This is more intense and it's scaring the shit out of me. And I was like, you, then you need to go in. And so she finally did go in and um, she learned a few things one of which was that nearly all the beds were full in the hospital, many of them uh, with people who were having breathing issues. Um, she got tested for the flu, it was negative. She is really jovial and funny and quirky and was making friends with the staff and a couple of the nurses um, confirmed a lot of those people were also tested for flu, no flu. Uh, she found it odd that the doctors and nurses were all wearing masks, but I get it, you know, if you're thinking, oh my God, what's happening? No one's testing positive for flu, it's flu season. What's happening? You have to be extra cautious. So, you know, there's that. Um, but then she also noticed that the intravenous medication that they gave her was not on her final bill. I think that's odd, don't you? Why, why wouldn't it be on the bill? I mean, I don't understand that. That, that. that seems highly suspect to me. So I'm gonna leave you with this one last thing, going back to film, because I was in my kitchen the other day making my coffee concoction. And I thought about the scene where in Pee Wee's Big Adventure, he goes and he's gonna get his bike back from Francis. And I thought, oh my God, that seems so fitting. Kiwi represents the people. Francis represents the government. 
Francis stole the bike, took it. So Pee Wee goes over there and he knocks on the door. <laughs> and the butler opens the door and he's asking where Francis is. And he's like, he's taking a bath. And he's like, oh really? Where are they hosing him down? It's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's so damn funny. Um, who's hosing down the government? Who's trying to wash away the bullshit? They are. Things are being implemented and then backfiring on them. And then this is how evil and, and ignorant they are simultaneously. So Pee Wee knocks on the door again after the butler slams the door. You'll see it when you click on it because it'll make you laugh. And uh, there's a knock on the door, tick, 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 and the butler opens it and it's an automatic arm stuck to the door, tick, 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 tick. <laughs> and Pee Wee has um, averted their attention so he can go find Francis and get his bike. And so then he does find him and he jumps on him and you know, there's that. So then I thought the father, Francis's father and the butler are on the outside of the door while Pee Wee's throwing down Francis in the pool. And um, I'm thinking, so the father is um, gonna stay loyal to his son. He's like, what's going on in there? Um, that's fine. So there is a lot of loyalty to the government, right? With no questions asked. No questions asked. It's the government, they're always gonna help us out. No, they freaking won't. Why do we give them money to tell us what to do? Are we not capable of governing ourselves? I think we are. The butler, who's the butler? The butler is the rest of the people who, you know, maybe they're looking to the government or working for the government or just observing the government, but they're, they're, they're curious. They're asking the questions, even though they're there ready for the, you know, the fight for justice. And they're remaining loyal to that belief, but, but they're curious. They don't say much. They just kind of sit back and watch. So watch that clip and see what you think about that analogy. Coffee epiphanies. I'm going to go take a walk with the birds because I love them. And as I posted yesterday, literally, there were three little birds outside my window singing every little thing going to be all right. Peace out, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe to my channel. Share it if you would. Comment below. Comment about any movies where you had that moment where you're going, oh my God, oh my God. Just saying, we're free thinking individuals. That is the last thing that we should want to have taken away from us. But it's playing out on a world stage. We have to unite, consciously unite get our collective shit together, stop fighting with each other, stop choosing sides. Last I checked, we're all human, most of us. Much love.